Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. My guest this week is Aaron Robinson. Aaron is the Game and Fish Department's Upland Birds Supervisor. We're going to talk about the overall outlook for Upland Birds this fall. Aaron, uh, we're going to take the species one by one. Let's start with sage grouse. Um, you did your actual counts a while back. How did those look? Yeah, we typically do our our sage grouse counts the third weekend of or the third week of April. This year uh, we had a drastic decline. We went from well, we never did have a very strong population, but we went from 31 males to 17 males, which is uh, uh, almost a 50 percent decrease in our population. Uh, we're attributing that to uh, our our population has become so small and so. Uh, sparse that we're not getting any reproduction with our females. There's not very many leks, not very many uh, males to breed those females and so we're not getting any reproduction. Uh, that's just a function of a uh, population being at a level that cannot uh, offset the natural mortality that's occurring every year. So uh, we're, we're struggling, there's no doubt about it. Obviously those numbers would not support a hunting season here in North Dakota. Right, I mean we're, we're at a point where a hunting season on sage grouse may be a thing of the past. We likely will never open it again. I can't say that for sure, but um, it would take a, a very uh, strong miracle to make that happen anytime soon. We haven't had one now for six, seven years maybe? Yep, the last season we had was in uh, 2007 and we closed it in 2008 because uh, we had an outbreak of West Nile virus uh, that year and so it, po it dropped our population below 100 males, which is a threshold where we determined to, to close the season. Well, let's switch gears and move on to something that might be a little bit rosier, and that's uh, sharp-tailed grouse. Yeah, I mean, our sharp town population uh, essentially covers the entire state. I mean, the, the uh, western two-thirds of the state is the main primary range. We do have populations in the eastern, range, each, eastern part of the state. Um, but essentially we have grouse sharp tails in almost every county, well every county in, in North Dakota. Uh, we do get some harvest pretty much everywhere. Our spring counts, we just finished analyzing that, are about 6% down statewide from last year. And that is J basically an indication of the population trend or index that we monitor from year to year. Uh, we were kind of expecting that, we had some dry weather last year. Uh, production wasn't as good and so I was expecting a little bit of a decline and it's so it's relatively similar to last year's breeding population. You have ways that of course sage grouse you said you can count those by hand and yeah. almost on one hand. Right. Pheasants you have a different way of counting. How do you estimate your sharp tail? Uh, right population? so what we do is we have these what we call our sharp tail census blocks and they're roughly a 36 square mile uh, or a township block that's spread across the state. And we have, you know, roughly uh, 25 of these that we count across the state. And the, our uh, biologists go out in the spring and they do listening runs to try to identify every single dancing ground in that block. And once we find out all the dancing grounds, then we get a count on it three times over the course of April. And so we get a, a replicate uh, count to figure out the high count of males attending. And we use that protocol every year to be able to compare from year to year. You do have a species of grouse that uh, is pretty unique to the state and some people probably don't even know that we have them here and that's ruffed grouse. Yeah we do have uh, uh, two small populations of ruffed grouse up in the Pemina Gorge in the uh, uh, Turtle Mountains and again this is a very small population if any of any of our uh, sportsmen who have hunted those in the fall you know it's a unique opportunity you get out in the in the aspen groves and some of that uh, beautiful country up there and so we do have a population our numbers have struggled in the in the past years i mean those those populations are based on different life stages of the aspen groves and and when you get an older stand of aspen groves uh, those populations decline so you have to continually uh, do management to keep those young young stands growing and that's what really produces uh, rough grouse. Where they are on a, cy a cyclic uh, trend typically, they, they have a 10 year cyclic trend and we, we are on the, the upper end of the lower trough. So we're just starting to head up 
from the last couple of years. I'm hoping that we're going to see another increase this year, but we're still looking at those numbers. Uh, how about Hungarian partridge? You know, our hum, our hunt pop partridge is one of the bright spots, I think, in the state. Back in the early uh, 90s and the 80s, we had a tremendous population. I mean, we harvested more huns than any state in the country. And then our population kind of de- uh, crashed coming into those wet years that we had. And now it's starting to rebound a little bit. I think we're, we haven't looked at the harvest yet because we're waiting on some, some uh, license numbers, but I'm anticipating and guessing we're going to have quite a bit of an increase of harvest from last year. So uh, I'm seeing a lot more partridge. The biologists that I talk to are seeing a lot more. And they're kind of, it's still spotty. It's still hit and miss. It's not something where a, a sportsman can call me and say, well, where should I go for huns? I can't even point you to the exact <laughs> point to go for huns. It's an opportunistic bird that, you know, if you can find some areas that are, are associated with ag that, that hold sharp tails, you're likely going to find some huns. Well, let's talk about the uh, species that everybody's been waiting to hear about. That's pheasants. Our pheasant population obviously is, is kind of the backbone of our upland game program. Uh, we have more, more hunters uh, pursue them. And our population, or our spring population from our crowing counts is relatively the same as last year. There was about a, a almost a 2% increase this year. Uh, and that, that has kind of uh, varied across the, the state. The southeast part of the state had quite a bit of a dec- decline. Um, but the other regions from west to central were slightly up. But, not enough to to say there's a big increase from last year. I know a lot of pheasant hunters out there that are going, hey, you know, we had another mild winter and this is going to be just gangbusters this year, but... Yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of variables that are going to go into our population and, and the hunting season this year. A mild winter is a good start, but the problem is you have to have the right uh, conditions to produce a good hatch and you don't want really wet cold years and you don't want dry years because dry years don't produce the insects that are the chicks need to survive those first 10 days and so this year at least in the west uh, and even some parts of the central we've been in a pretty dry cycle and that's going to impact the the survivability of these chicks i think we'll have good nest success good nest initiation and we probably have a lot of broods but i think the brood sizes are going to be down this year just because a lot of those chicks are not going to be able to survive those first 10 to 15 days. How do you estimate your pheasant populations? I know you do crowing counts, but yep. you also count the broods. Yep, a crow, we have a couple different methods. A crowing count is what we do in the spring in May typically, and that's just uh, indexing the number of roosters that we hear on, uh, tra- on uh, assigned transects, and these transects we run every year. Uh, that gives us an index of that hunting or that, that spring population. What that really tells us is it's, it's indicative of the previous year's hunting season. So when we have a good hunting season, that following May, we have a pretty high crowing count. It doesn't necessarily relate to our, our future hunting seasons because there are too many variables that play on nest initiation, uh, habitat, is the big key here. I mean, if we don't have habitat, we're not going to have nests. And, and then if we have bad weather, whether it's cool or wet or really hot and dry, those both impact. So we want a happy medium of wet weather and uh, dry weather. You mentioned habitat and the loss of habitat. And it seems like where you're finding pheasants, where there is good habitat, you're also finding a lot of pheasant hunters. Yeah, th- th- I think that's one of the challenges we've, we're starting to run into this uh, over the last few years is we've lost CRP. A lot of that CRP has been tied with our, our plots program. A lot of those plots acres have come out, and so now it's, it's condensing the areas where we have plots associated with that, that good pheasant CRP habitat, and that is congregating hunters. And so it's not uncommon to go out to some of these plots in the southwest at six in the morning before the sun's even up and find five or six pickups. <laughs> um, you know, so there are a lot of places across the state that ha- hold pheasants that hunters can have a really fun uh, hunt, get into birds and be away from hunters. The Southwest obviously has the most pheasants and, we, and everyone knows that, 
but the, we do have pheasants spread across this state and there are great opportunities in other parts of the state as well. Bottom line, uh, I guess, for upland in North Dakota, at least for this year, some good, some not so good. Yeah, it, it is a little early to tell. Uh, you know, most, most of our, our fall predictions are going to come after we start our brood surveys. That's when we really start to understand what our production was for this year. Once we start that, which will begin in the next two weeks, we'll be able to be a, a little bit more strategic in letting uh, sportsmen know where the populations are strong. We'll sit down a little closer to the opening of grouse seasons and talk further. Yeah, great. All right, thanks Aaron. Yeah. Here are the scheduled opening dates for upland game in North Dakota. Sharptail, ruffed grouse, and partridge seasons all open on Saturday, September 10th. The daily limit for all three species is three and the possession limit is 12. Pheasant season is scheduled to open on Saturday, October 8th, and the limits are the same as the grouse species, three daily and 12 in possession. As Aaron mentioned, there is no open season on sage grouse again this year. For Aaron Robinson and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.